Ladies and gentlemen, the mic is on. Oh yes, it is on. And today is December 4th, 2012. And this is the CanCal Emma Stream Day 9. Level 9 today, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, that is right. I am your host, Keenan Lafferty. And today we are going to be doing the usual. Moving back into the comic, we are actually going to be working on page 4 of part two of my comic that is going to be releasing this Saturday as I mentioned yesterday for those of you who tuned in on the stream or watched it on the YouTube archive. So thank you guys once again for coming in and supporting the stream live as it is happening, as it is being created before your very eyes. And yes, if today is your first journey or your first uh, appearance, your first What's the word? The first viewing. Today is your first viewing, then. Very quickly, to sum up what the show is all about, is I create comics. I'm a professional streamer. And I make comics, and you tune in every... Whoop. Going back. Professional. And you tune in every day, Monday through Thursday, at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, as I continue working on my comic, Emma. And we have fun. We dress up in suits, we put on hats, and hilarity ensues. And we just talk about deep, deep things with our lives and philosophical, philosophical thoughts and things like that. And then we learn to speak the English language much better. So, let's go ahead and just pick up where we left off, right? Well, not where we left off yesterday, but where I left off today. All right? Because I'm trying to prove to you guys that I can actually do a little bit more work than 10%. I can work at more than 10% capacity with my illustrations when I'm on stream. <laughs> ah. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I would like to ask how you guys are doing as I'm looking at the chat. Uh, it looks like everybody is having a good time. People are saying happy anniversary. Why, why is it anniversary? Anniversary of what? The beginning of the... <laughs> mm -hmm. Someone said happy anniversary. I don't know. What is that all about? Is there an anniversary that I'm missing? Please tell me while I clean up Emma's face. She's been outside playing in the mud and her face is all dirty. And I gotta clean that up. Clean that crap up. It's probably like something really important. I'm totally absent minded when it comes to things like that. Mmm. Today was a good day. And I will tell you why in just a moment. <laughs> uh, you guys are so funny. Anyway, let me get to t telling you about the amazingness that happened today. Uh, today I had the pleasure of going to a store called Whole Foods, right? Whole Foods. And there they have all kinds of amazing vegan diet things like all things are natural there and very expensive they have good drinks as well as amazing cheeses if you're into that kind of thing I always want to get to the point where I have enough money to spend 10 bucks on a piece of cheese that's like this big it's literally like a block like that big and it's like 10 bucks right and I'm like man that must be some really good cheese <laughs> if I eat that cheese I will gain superhuman powers or something because, yeah, otherwise I, I couldn't justify paying that much for it. But, regardless, I was there today with my friend. He was picking up some things for his maja. And Tuesdays, I guess, is the day when they have all their free samples going on, right? So, at first I walked in and there was like little nectarines. Like they have these little little domes. It's almost look like uh, Sandy's Biodome from Spongebob, right? Except inside of that glass case... You can open it and reach inside and you can grab some free food. And they had tangerines. I was like, oh, that's great. The first thing I noticed, I was like, yeah, that's cool. They're, you know, 
free samples of tangerines. It's like Costco, right? But better. I'll tell you why it was better. So first there was tangerines, and then there was sliced oranges, right? Just like a few feet down. I was like, okay, cool. I'll try this too. Then I walked further down to the seafood section, and there's like crab fondue and Ritz crackers, just just for free, right? You just pick it up, eat it, you know, and then I, I looked at it and I started picking up the spoon and then the guy, the chef behind the counter started talking to me about it. He's like, oh yeah, you gotta check that out, blah, blah, blah. And he's basically educating me on the fondue. And I was like, haha, that's nice. Oh, great. Oh, oh no, uh, he's got me. He caught me looking. Now he's gonna want me to buy it. You know, but he was actually just really nice. He was just trying to do his job and tell me what it was all about, right? So I ate it. I ate like three crackers with the most amazing crab fondue on it that I've ever had in my life. And then I thanked that man for his education. And I said, am I buying it? Nope. But I'm going to tell my friend about it. And then I brought Jake. I was out there with Jake today. And um, Jake, for those of you who don't know who that is, he's the writer of the comic and my best friend. So we were out shopping today. And yeah, <laughs> I brought Jake over because I was like, Jake, you must try this cheese, this fondue. It melts in your mouth and it has crab in it with a K. Crab with a K, right? Because we're shopping at Whole Foods. It's all vegan. Well, it's not all vegan, but you know what I mean. It's hipstery uh, vegan, vegan food in a store. Oh, hmm. Oh, Trader Joe's. Oh, I absolutely love Trader Joe's. Okay. <laughs> yes, I need to. Uh, qualifications for buying that cheese is you must be wearing a monocle at all times, uh, as Mr. Sundancer put it. Um, I'm trying to find what you guys were saying that anniversary was about. Sorry. No, nobody, nobody replied to that. Were you guys trying to trick me or something? You guys laying a trap? Yes, in a pipe. Be like, this is fancy. This is the most. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? This cheese is exquisite. You know, and then I'm blowing bubbles out of the, the pipe there. <laughs> because, yes. I actually love those things. But what's up with that? Like, why would they make all those toys that teach kids how to smoke? Like, that's weird. And you remember those, like, those gum things that you get from the ice cream man that were, like, 10 years old, but it had, like, the powder in it? You, like, blow it, and then the smoke would come out? Like, why did they make those for kids? I don't understand that. What kind of evil person make candy for kids that teaches them how to smoke? It's terrible. And then do you guys remember those soda... Can or those soda candies, which is basically like a soda, like it's a piece of wax, right? That's molded into a soda can, and then in the soda wax thing, there's like fluid or whatever, and you basically break it off and drink it, you know. And you know what's what's a kid gonna want to do, right? After he drinks that, he's like, oh, that's great. I wonder what this tastes like, and he just like sticks that ball of wax in his mouth, starts chewing that. Or maybe that was just me that used to do that, but still, gotta think about the children. Children are our future. If they're all choking on wax, then they're not probably not going to grow up to be very, very happy people. And that's what it's all about. Hmm. <laughs> uh, am I saying fondue, right? Fondue, fondue. How do you, I don't know how to put the proper accent on that, but I just say fondue, like kangaroo fondue. But yes, needless to say, today was a very, very happy day filled with free samples. Oh, I didn't even tell you the rest of the free samples I got. Okay. So I totally got caught up, you know, I went in the store with Jake, right? And immediately I got caught up with the tangerines, right? But Jake just keeps walking, right? Because he's shopping for his mother. And he is single-minded and deadly when he is on a mission, right? So, of course, I get, I get intercepted by the first distraction that 
I can find. And I'm enjoying that. And finally, when I catch up to him, on the other side of the store, there's free chocolate pudding and free tapioca, just like there, and free raisin bread. And I was like, what? Do they do this every Tuesday? It's like, if I was a bum, like, I could seriously become a hobo, and I know I could eat here every Tuesday. <laughs> I could just come in, walk around, kind of get cleaned up so nobody would know that I was a hobo, and just kind of walk around, act like I'm trying to buy something, and then head out, you know? Basically, I'm good. Good for lunch, and then come back for dinner. You might have, like, some rotisserie chicken going on there, you know? <laughs> so, life provides all that you need. And therefore, we should not be afraid to become hobos. Alright, that's the lesson I'm trying to get across. Uh, oh! Oh, this is, uh... I think Photoshop is doing this thing where it really likes to bring up the help menu when I don't ask it to, and then as soon as I exit out of it, it will open it again. Yeah. It might crash it. Oh, I just love it when this happens. I just love it when it happens. And I'm like, you want to give me some help? Tell me how I can never have this happen again. Please. But, looks like we're back in action. <laughs> Aislinn? Where... Aislinn, where do you work at? Did you say... Oh, you guys are saying funny stuff and I'm missing it. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> it, yes, uh, this is actually not my room. This is actually somebody else's house that... They've actually been gone for a very, very long time. They're on extended vacation. And needless to say, I'm just making use of the room, right? Yes, because I am resourceful, right? But you don't even know the start of it. You don't even know the half. But don't worry, all will be revealed in time. All will be revealed. I've really been enjoying this new technique that I've got for kind of cleaning up the face. I feel like it's working really well. I'm really, really liking it. And the stream is going so perfectly, so happy. When I look up there and see that there are no frames dropped, that just brings warmth to my heart and it just compounds with the Christmas spirit that I'm feeling at this time of year in America it just makes me so 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 happy I feel weird saying that like here in America you know because some of you are watching from across the world like that's really cool like it gives me like a sense of pride you know I got, sometimes I'll tell my friends, be like, yeah, I make this stream and I do this show that where I teach people and, you know, somehow people across the world have found out about it and they watch it. And I don't know exactly how that happened, but that's pretty cool. Like, I'm really, really happy that I can reach people far and wide and inspire them and teach them. My classroom. My classroom is the world. And that is why I love YouTube. Because it is not I love teaching for free I love giving back you know what I mean if I can inspire and teach and give back for free that makes me happy man very happy man plus I love the community and the fan artists thank you guys so much I gotta say this every time I see a new Emma fan art on the site it just makes me so happy and it just reaffirms the fact that what I'm doing is exactly what I need to be doing, right? It's not easy. Making a comic isn't easy. As much as I thought it was going to be, it is not easy. That was a rude awakening. I was like, it's fine. Just draw some pictures and color. How, how hard could it be? How long could it take? No. 
takes quite a while. And, oh, and creating the website. Oh man, why is my nose so itchy? I'm trying not to itch my nose too much. I noticed yesterday I was just like watching, kind of going through the footage of the stream yesterday. I'm just like, <sighs> I'm like picking my nose and stuff. It looked really funny. So I'll try to not subject you guys to that as much as possible. No promises though. No promises. Oh, yes. Yes. That does remind you to finish the fan art you're working on. While you're watching the stream, you should be working on your fan art. Okay? Look. I mean, you've got the material right here. Look. Got the material right here. There's no reason why you can't do that. So hop to. Hop to it. Get to it! Do you guys remember that energy drink, Amped? Or was it Amp? Amp! Get to it! Whatever happened to that? Why did it fall off the face of the earth? Their, their commercials were kind of funny. You know, it wasn't anything revolutionary, but they just literally fell off the face of the planet. Like, I can't find Amped anywhere. And they had, like, Amped Code Red. They'd always be at the gas stations and everything. They were, like, the Mountain Dew Challenger, basically. And, uh, yeah, now they're gone. At least from what I know. Or maybe they still sell them in, like, those, uh, those, uh, little Mexican shops or whatever. Those little tucked away Mexican shops. Along with the Lucas and those candies where basically, you know, you, like, push it. You, like, it's, you push it and then it, like, comes out the top, like, hair or, like, uh, like ground beef almost, and then you just like, Arm! and then you eat it. <laughs> Again, I don't know what, what my obsession is with candy and ice cream man thing today. I don't know. We're just on the ice cream man kick. Like, speaking of that, where the heck did they get those like Ninja Turtle ice cream bars? Where did they get the the Sonic ones with the bubblegum eyes? Like, where do those come from? Because I never see those in the supermarket. Is there like a special site where you need to order those bars online and then they'll ship them to you? Do you have to have like an ice cream man license? So what does that look like? Probably not very good, but I was always curious, like where do they get those? Or are they just been saving them from the 80s and they just haven't sold them so they just keep them in those trucks? That's my guess. That's what my parents always told me. But you know, I like to trust like to experiment, you know? It's like, don't believe everything people tell you. Try it out. If it tastes 20 years old, then maybe you might be onto something. But don't judge an ice cream man by his ice cream bars. That one's going to go down in history. I already know it. I feel it. Don't judge a, a book by its cover or an ice cream man by his bars by his Sonic ice cream. Okay. Oh. Oh. Face complete. The face phase is complete. Ah, see what I did there? Ah, aha! <laughs> Just looking at it. Yeah, sorry, it's just the food's on my mind today. I've been having a lot of really good food and sweets and yummy stuff. Yummy, yummy, yummy stuff. Oh, speaking of that, you know what another one of my favorite things is? When I open the fridge and there is French toast from the morning in there, and it's just waiting to be stuck in the microwave and heated up, and then you slap some butter on it, put some syrup all over it, and then just eat it. French toast for dinner. Looking at the chat and dancing, that way people on YouTube have something to look at. Mmm. <laughs> Watch this. Watch this. Don't look at this. Don't look at this. Right, can I work like this? Can I do this? 
Yes, don't look at me. Look here. Hmm. Yes. I can almost see through it. Almost. Hmm, smells nice too. Yeah. Where's my brush even? Okay, that's not gonna work. Ugh. Maybe I should just take off the screen because this is supposed to be us coming together and drawing together. Oh, I'm erasing things. That's what I can see. <laughs> By the way, look, this beanie has many, many uses. I don't know if you guys noticed, but before the stream, somebody gave me the idea that I should be wearing a bow tie, right? So I actually took this rubber band took this rubber band right here, right? And I wrap it around this beanie. This is how smart and resourceful I am. I actually made a bow tie out of this. Like this, right? And just kind of fluff out the edges, right? Huh? And I stuck it right here. See? And now we are sophisticated. We are sophisticated artists working on our pieces. And this almost looks like a, a tux thing. It's kind of nice. The lines, right? Lovely. Lovely. By the way, I work on my comments all day like this, right? It doesn't matter if I'm on the stream or not. I'll just be like, hmm, I feel like wearing a bow tie right about now. And then that draws my creative energies and gets me in the zone, if you will. And allows me to deliver at 10% capacity. Mm-hmm. I may be a hobo, but at least I am a sophisticated hobo. I panhandle at Whole Foods. Some hobos are a Walmart. Others at the train station, I go to Whole Foods because I only accept the finest samples. Only the finest samples, the finest cheeses. John in hands, John in hands. I actually love drawing hands. I love the art of simplifying hands, right? I love figuring out how to get the most bang for your buck out of your hands and then at the same time just simplifying them to the point where they're very, very easy to draw. And that makes a happy artist because the more efficient you can do something, the more time you have, and the less strain on your wrist it will be. By the way, I really hope you guys are enjoying this brush. This is actually one of my favorite brushes in the set for those of you who enjoyed last week's K and Kale show. I was talking about brushes and how to set them up. This is a very, very, very good brush. Probably one of the best I've ever used. It's just so perfect. It has the perfect amount of texture, character, I don't know. I don't know how else to describe it. It's just good. It's just really good. Yes. Yeah, I was kind of thinking that too, Kyle. Yeah, the forearm is looking a little, a little fat. Let's see if we can go ahead and fix that. Because originally my my line, I'm just looking at the line art underneath it. I'm thinking maybe what we want is more something like that. Because she does kind of have a little bit of like a flow, like the style of it is like her forearm is a little bit, she has a little bit of like Popeye arms, you know what I mean? Where kind of the forearm kind of flows into the wrist and it kind of gets a little bit more fat. But not to the point where it looks weird. Huh. Hard to explain. 
fact, this arm needs to be skinnied up just a tad bit more. And we'll go ahead and do that. Thank you, Kyle. You're all my trusted advisor. No more of this. What are you guys talking about over here? Brain? Uh, yes. Uh, Brain Deep? Yes. This brush is in the one that I posted. It is this one right here. It's called Afghan Nomener Pincel 45. And I don't know why it's called that. I actually just got this brush from one of my buddies that I worked with at Riot. And he showed it to me, and needless to say, I was amazed and wowed. And I was like, I must have this power. Hmm. Cool. Cool. By the way, I hope I don't talk too much on these things. Like, if you want me to just shut up, and just draw, then please say so in the chat. And I'll go ahead and do that. If not, then I can go for days and days. I just go from one thing to the next. Just hop around, hop around, hop around. Talking about things from my past, things that I love, things that I did that day, things that I did that day that remind me of things in the past. You know, all that good stuff. But if you'd rather just watch me work, then just say, shut up! Shut up and draw. Do what you were made to do. How about the singing? Singing, yeah? Starting to become a little bit more confident, certain. And when I feel comfortable and certain, I tend to sing and hum and have fun. Right? I remember this one time, and talk about me being naive and childlike. I remember one of the first days that I was in junior high, right? I came right out of, you know, uh, elementary school, right? So I was going into seventh grade. And one of the first classes that I went into was my history class, right? And I just had this, like, I must have been a happy child or something because I was always getting in trouble, or not even getting in trouble, but. One of my classmates that was sitting next to me, he's like, dude, you're always like humming. You're always humming. Stop humming. Shut up. And I was like, I didn't, I didn't even notice it until I really like paid attention. And it was just really, really funny to me that I would do something like that without even noticing. I was such a naive, sheltered child getting tossed to the wolves in junior high. Yes, I'm a hummer. Humming them. There we go. Wait. I kind of like not connecting that line there. It looks kind of nice. <laughs> Massive Skype calls. Oh yeah, by the way, that reminds me of something. Okay, so I had the idea that I would like to have, or somebody posted this idea, and I was like, that's brilliant. I'm going to steal it and said I came up with it. I'm going to steal it and say I came up with it, <laughs> as we use our proper tenses there. Uh, anyway, someone posted that comment. I was like, that's brilliant. I'm going to steal it and say I came up with it. And that is to have guests on the stream. Like, how cool would that be? I have some amazing artist friends, many of whom I work with. And 
yeah, I think that would be really fun to have somebody on the stream. Maybe we can just like have a little bit of a Q&A session. You guys can ask them, you know, what's going on at work and what they like about, you know, doing splashes for a riot, you know, if they work at riot or what have you. But I think that would be really cool to have guests on the show. And then I can be a way more professional and talk in my talk constantly in my radio void cat uh, my radio voice, right? Talk constantly in my radio broadcaster voice. Give the interview with much professionalism and stuff. Yeah. My shoutcaster voice. My shoutcaster voice? I don't know what my shoutcaster voice would be. I actually tried shoutcasting for a little while. In fact, that was one of the biggest reasons why I decided to start the show. Was because I wanted to shoutcast StarCraft 2. But that was like one of the coolest things I had ever seen. And so, of course, during that time, I was trying to figure out what would my caster voice be. Was I going to talk a little bit lower, a little bit more volumetric? Was I going to talk a little bit more like a horse race shoutcaster coming around the corner, around the corner now? I wasn't going to talk really, really boringly like this. Hey, hey guys. Hey guys. This is me. This is my channel. This is me shoutcasting some StarCraft 2. I hope you like it. Thumbs up. So yeah, there were some things that I had to figure out, obviously. And I think the biggest thing that I learned was especially after doing 50, you know, 60 episodes of the KNKL show and looking back at how I started it and now the way I am now, it's so cool to realize how far I've come in terms of like just that confidence when you're speaking publicly or even live and you're very, very confident with yourself and it just, you feel, it's not even so much confidence as much as comfortable, comfortableness, comfortability, right? Comfortableness. Get mad. Come on! That's one for the books! Writing that one down. But yeah, I'm actually really enjoying it. And I'm not saying I'm perfect by any means, but I got a lot to learn. But just looking how far I've come since the beginning, it's really awesome. And I think it's something that I think a lot of people should do in their life. They should really kind of either sit down and record themselves and just pay attention to your little mannerisms. and things that you can improve upon with your speech. Because when you're talking to people and you have, you know, nervous tics like saying um all the time or saying uh you know what I mean? Or for me what I do now is I say right at the end of things. So I'll say like a statement I'll be like right. That's a new one that's kind of developing and I'm trying to watch out for it. And it's not the worst thing. It's better than saying uh, you know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, um, <laughs> basically, yeah, I started out and I was total, total dweeb. But now I feel a lot better. Like, I just feel so much more, I don't know exactly how to describe it. I feel like I'm really able to just be myself, you know? I don't feel like I became anything. I feel like I just brought myself out. Like, I figured out what I was all about and... I just let that shine through. And I think that's really, really fun, and I hope that people understand the importance of being able to communicate in a very confident and basically just showing the best parts of yourself type of manner. And it just blew my mind that people could shoutcast, right? I saw shoutcasters, and I was like, man, those guys are confident. Those guys know what they're doing. They know what they're talking about, and they're entertaining. It literally got to the point where I would be watching certain shoutcaster shows even after I had stopped playing StarCraft 2. It's like I didn't even play the freaking game, but I tuned in to watch the stream and the show just because I liked the person and I liked how they spoke and I liked hearing about their stories and stuff like that. And at that point, I was very, very captivated. And I was like, you know what? I would love to be able to do something like this one day. You know? And now here I am doing my own stream and people 
real people are actually watching. Like, that is really, really cool. So, I guess what I'm really trying to say is thank you guys. It really means a lot. It means a lot. You've made my dreams come true already. It doesn't need to be millions of people. I actually really like it being a bit of a smaller crowd. It's more manageable. It's more... It's more intimate. If you catch my drift. Oh! That's how you draw a hand! Oh, simplified. Hmm. Oh, what time are we at? 7.37. Sweet! 20 minutes to go. I'm gonna go ahead and do the usual. We'll just keep working until about 7.55. And then I will open the chat over here to your very own questions. So if you wanted to ask me something this evening, make sure you're jotting it down. Jot it down. Write it down so you don't forget. Have a good question ready. And I will answer. I will answer your questions. Whatever they may be. They don't have to be art related. They can be about my favorite candy. They can be about Keenan, there's this girl at my school that I really like and I don't know what to say to her. What, what do I say? And I will tell you. I know the secret. I know the secret phrase that gets all girls to swoon. And it works for any man, and it works on every girl. <laughs> uh, not really. Don't, don't ask that. <laughs> or, or else I'm going to just make up something. And uh, yeah, you're going to do that, and it's going to fail miserably. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> I need a drink of water. I am completely parched. I am so parched. One moment. I'm going to take a break and stretch my wrist. Oh, that feels good. Oh, by the way, the reason why I have this rubber band here, I've shown you guys on my show before. I like to do this to stretch out the tendons in my arm, right? The flexors and the whatever is the opposite of the grip muscles, the anti-grip muscles, I'll call them that. So that is why I have this. I'm going to grab a drink of water really quick and we will resume. Ah, yes. Yes, 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 yes. <clears throat> oh, what are you guys talking about? Ah, yes, I am a crab. I'm a, I'm a... Where's the other ones? Yeah, I am. I'm a lobster in the tank. I've got two of these things, too, so I can totally be that. No? Like this? <laughs> I just feel bad for those little lobsters, right? I was like, oh, that's so sad. They, they can't even fight each other and rip each other to shreds. They have to, like, sit there with the little things on their hands. Well, I might as well eat them, you know, put them out of their misery. By the way, I don't know if you guys have heard of a restaurant called The Boiling Crab, but, oh, my gosh, that place is so good. Oh, whoo! Just thinking about it is like fills me with pleasure. Because basically what they do is they bring out a fully cooked crab, not just the legs, it's a full crab that they just boiled. It was alive probably about 30 seconds ago before they bring it out to you. And literally they just slam it down on the table and it's in a bag, right? And it's filled with garlic butter, lemon pepper, and Cajun spices, right? And you can make it really, really spicy, which I really like to do. And they bring it out to you in this big bag, you open it up, you take the crab out, slam it on the table, and you get to basically pop the head open, and eat all the brains inside of it. There's actually like fat inside of the crab's head, and it's called, I don't know, like, I forget what it's called. They call it uh, crab fat, but I call it crab brains. So I eat those, and it's really good, and then you eat the legs one by one, and you dip it in the sauce that was in the bag that it came in. And they also have shrimp and mussels. And it is just, oh, so good. And it's messy, too, right? Because they give you bibs. 
you have bibs that you get to wear, so you're like a little baby sitting at the at the table. You're like, yay, right? <laughs> and uh, it is very messy. There's no utensils. It's all just you use your hands, right? And it's very, very, very fun. And no, I do not want to update my software right now. Get out of here. Foodgasm. Yeah. Toucans knows what I'm talking about. Toucans knows what it's about. Oh. I would love to go to Maryland. I'm, if I'm spoiled by boiling crab, Sundancer says Maryland has the real crabs. <laughs> it says go there if you want to. <laughs> Get crabs. Anyway, um, what I was uh, talking about earlier was with my friend, we were talking about boiling crab, and he's like, hey, next time we go there, we got to get crawdads, right? And I remember this one time, I was out with my, my pops and my little brothers, and we actually went and we caught a bunch of crawdads, right? I'm just literally on food today. I don't know what's going on. It's just, ah, uh, can't get off of it. But... Uh, we went to catch these crawdads, and the way that we caught them was really, really fun. We basically took a stick, just a regular stick, with some fishing line attached to it, and then we went by like a like a fish market or something. And like after they're done, like taking off all the meat, like all the the fish heads and the guts and all that stuff, that stuff that they throw out, basically got a bunch of those, right? Got a bunch of fish guts and fish heads, and we just attached them to the stick with a string on it. And we throw it into the water, and it was just really, really shallow, right? It was just like rocks, you know, it was like these big rocks. And we just toss it in the water, and as soon as the fish guts went in the water, you see just like hundreds of crawdads just come out from underneath the rocks, and they just like grab onto the little fish guts, and we yank them out, and then we had like a little 10-gallon bucket, and we just shake them off into the bucket, and then throw it out again, and it was like, it was so much fun. I really had a lot of fun. So we filled a couple buckets worth of crawdads, and there were still, you know, thousands of them in there. And um, we went home, we cooked them, and they were really yummy. Really, really yummy. Just craving good food, that's all it is. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle, you're funny. Oh my gosh. I'm starstruck when any of you mention my name anywhere. Or draw me. I am in shock when you guys draw me fan art. Like, seriously. And, no. There's never a point where I'm like, Yes, I am the star of the show, and I say your name. And then you are to grovel at my feet. And say, oh, we are not worthy. We are not worthy to be watching the stream. No, that's not the way it goes. We are here because we are all artists and people taking a journey of passion. And we are united, right? We are united and we stand as one. It's not me, the king, and you, the lowly people of the kingdom. This is a democracy. Mm -hmm, mm hmm But I am the president. I am the president of the comic. I will take that. <laughs> hey, yeah, I actually have made some progress today. Line and stuff, and yeah, it's not bad. Or I don't know if you were being sarcastic by saying that. Tell Varin. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> yeah, Journey of Passion. Journey of Passion. Sounds like a steamy romance novel. <laughs> Those ones that you see at the the, the local uh, supermarket, you know, with like the, the guy with the six-pack abs on it. Basically, they took the P90X picture, and then they just ripped it off of there and stuck it on the front of a book cover and put Journey of Passion. And they kind of tinted it purple and have like little golden lettering. Yeah, that's basically all it is. 
Those books are quite funny. Not that I really look at any of those. I'm just kind of passing by. I'm, you know, usually looking at like some Ninja Turtle comic or whatever, and then I see that out of the corner of my eye. You know, it's not like I'm looking for such thing. That is preposterous that I would look at that. Come on. Oh. Hmm. Yes, Telverin. Said your name. Listen up. Listen up. Watch out. Oh, that is one thing I didn't go biking today. I did not go biking because I'm dedicated to release my part of this comic on Saturday, right? I want to be able to release this on Saturday. And in order to do that, I'm going to have to be working a little bit of overtime, right? And I'm okay with doing that. If I have to sacrifice a little bit of my fitness to do that, I will, gladly. I'll jump back on that bike as soon as possible. Let's go ahead and throw on these shoelaces. Oh! If you'll notice how I actually simplify the shoelaces, it's actually very, very, very awesome. Because I was trying to, well, it's awesome because it's very, very simple, right? And I was like, oh man, I wanted to have like these awesome combat boots, but how do I draw all those interweaving, you know, shoelaces all the time, you know? And I knew that I couldn't do that because it's going to look weird with like such a simple character. You know, if you have such a simplistic character, and they have really, really detailed boots, it's going to look really out of place, and honestly, it's going to be a pain in the butt to draw. Unless I'm doing some sort of, like, promotional thing. Like, if I was doing, like, a really cool promotional picture of Emma, I would love to put, like, all this awesome, beautiful detail into her clothing. But for the comic, of course, you can't be drawing detailed shoes every time. It's almost kind of like, uh, I'll reference Scott Pilgrim, the way that he draws amazing... Uh, clothing and like specifically uh, the girls would always have like these cool boots on right but they look really really awesome but they were simplified to the point where there was just enough information there to basically communicate what it was and nothing more right and it's just in the style and I thought that was utter genius Yes. So. All right, how, how are we doing on time? All right. We's doing good. We got five minutes, and then I'm going to open up the chat to Q&A. So ready your questions. Ready the catapults of questions. Batten down the hatches of questions. Oh, I am going to be working all night on this comic, and I am okay with that because I love doing this. And I cannot wait to release the next part for you guys to take a look at. It's going to be tons of fun. Tons of fun. Cool, that looks really good. I'm gonna go ahead and just flip that really quickly. Let's just check out the face on the other end. That looks good to me. Well, her arm looks a little dinky, I don't know. I don't know if I wanna fix that. I think I do. Let's go ahead and I'll show you basically how I make edits. This is actually good that this happened. I can show you how I make edits to the lines after I've already put them in. So the big thing I'm gonna go ahead and do so I'm just going to go to, like if I take away the lines, you'll notice the sketches behind it, right? I'm going to go ahead and just erase this hand where it used to be because I'm going to be moving it and I don't want the sketch to distract it, right? Oh, have I not been saving? Whoa! Thank you, Gino. Thank you.
<laughs> uh, you guys are so funny. Fix it, I shall! Fix it, I shall! Alright, so check this out. So we know that her elbow comes down, like her elbow is placed at the right spot, right? But this arm, originally I wanted it to look like it's coming more in perspective, but it's not exactly looking right. So I'm thinking what I'm going to do is just elongate the arm just a tiny bit more. So I'm going to go ahead and just lasso this hand. Pay attention. Pay attention. Things are about to get crazy. Control C, copy, and delete it. <gasps> oh no, what? Oh. Let's go ahead and move that now that it's on its own layer. Pay attention to your tangents, right? We don't want to put the hand here because this is a tangent. We do not like this. We can't tell where that hand is going. So, if anything, I want the hand to be a little bit over, right? Just a teeny bit over. But then the thumb's kind of tangenting. But the point is at least that, that finger's over. So let's go ahead and try that. Let's see what that'll do. That'll do, pig. That'll do. That'll do, donkey. Shrek, for those of you. I wouldn't blame you if you didn't know about that. In fact, I pray that you guys have forgotten about Shrek by now because that IP sucks. Now, it was good for the first one, but once they started releasing Shrek 7, I got pretty tired of it. I was like, please, just let it die. Please. Come on. Go away. Nobody likes you anymore. That's an example of people just milking it for all it's worth, right? Which, I guess if you're running a business, it's okay. But, I lost a lot of respect for Shrek and Donkey. Because they sold out, in my opinion. Just kept making movies. It would have been good if they were, you know, actually good movies, but they sucked. It was not funny. They were too forced. It wasn't funny. And it was just trying to appeal to... You know, little kids that think, you know, farts and boogers are funny. <laughs> no. Shut up. We here on the K&K stream only appreciate the finest of humor, right? Because we are fancy people with monocles and bow ties and suits. Okay, so am I liking that? Mm. Uh, actually, I can't speak too much to it because I didn't see like Shrek 4 and 5, but I saw Shrek 2 and I was like, okay, that's good. And Shrek 3, I can't remember if I saw it, but there was just a point where I was like, okay, this is getting out of hand. It's getting out of hand. Speaking of out of hand. Is that working? Is this working? Something about this is still putting me off, and I don't know what it is. Do I need to warp this a little bit? Oh, maybe that's what I needed. A little bit more like that. Let's go ahead and fix those lines really quickly. And I think that'll do it. And that'll do it. Emma, fix your arm. I wish I could just tell this comic to draw itself, and it would do that. That's all I'm asking, right? All I'm asking is for you to draw yourself. It's not much. After all I've done for you. When have I ever said that you can't do something? Right? I created you. Now it's time for you to move on. It's time for you to be an adult and draw yourself. Oh, the tangent. Oh, get that away. We don't like those. Get that tangent out of here. <laughs> Tangerine. <laughs> I ate those today. <laughs> Tangerine. And they were good. All right, so how are we doing on time? Is it Q&A time? Saved. 
7.56, that means it is time to open up the chat, ladies and gentlemen, to Q&A. I hope that you have prepared some amazing questions for me. Let them rip. Let them come. Okay, Roman is asking a good question right off the bat. How did I warp it? I'll show you. Basically, select what you would like to warp. Hit Control-T, right-click, Control-T, right-click, and then you'll see this lovely menu pop up. Hit warp, and then you can either work like this or hit Control H to hide it, and then that grid is still existing and you can move it around. Right? Pretty cool, huh? And yes, that will save you some time. Will I be hosting LOL again tonight? Uh, Javon, no, unfortunately, I will be not. Or I will be, I will not be, I will be not playing LOL. No, unfortunately, I do not have time tonight because I am going to be working my little hiney off to be getting the next 10 pages done for Saturday. So I do apologize, and now I'm just hitting random tools. I don't know what they're doing. Just trying to fix this line here. Come on. Work with me. Work with me, Emma. Lovely! Alright. Do I plan for the Emma comic to be an animation? Helgen Warfare is asking this. This is actually a great, great question because I am, oh, I am, in fact, planning on having some sort of animation go into this. I don't know exactly how much I'll be using, but I would love eventually to be able to have the comic and be able to say pitch it to some company that wants to turn it into a show. Like that would be so cool, right? And I think that the style kind of lends itself pretty well to something that could be translated into an animation. At least uh, that's what my animator friend says. He's, he's been doing that for years and he said, man, this is like perfectly designed for animation. It's so simple. And yeah, that would be really cool. So it's like not part of the plan, but if somebody wants to do it and pay me to use my idea, then heck yeah, I'll I'll, I'll sell it to I'll sell it to a uh, cartoon studio. I won't sell the idea, but I'll sell them the rights to use it, right? Because I don't want to let go of my baby. I don't want to let go of my baby. I love it too much, too much. <laughs> <laughs> um, Miss for Michael is asking a great question. He's talking about me and Jake. Have we known each other since high school? Yes, actually, the story goes back, way back into high school, when we met in the fateful day that I joined the high school band. Right? No, no, actually, no, it was before high school. It was junior high, the junior high band class. Right? And we both were trumpet players, right? I was first chair, he was, you know, behind me, he was my, he was my, uh, protege, or whatever. <laughs> he'll, he'll say the opposite, he'll say he was first chair and, you know, I was his, his, uh, he was teaching me stuff, but, you know, between you and me, we know the secret, right? So, <laughs> so we met there and we became good friends and we basically just, like, played trumpet and we hung out during lunch and... Uh, me and him were always into video games, right? Like he was, uh, that was back when Warcraft 3 came out. And we were all just really into those types of games. And he was a really cool friend. And we've been besties ever since. Alrighty. Moving on. Teehee Tummy Tum is asking, You've done a lot of can kill shows of many different varieties. Will you ever consider doing one on self-portraits? Hmm. Tee hee, tummy tum, that is a great question. I would actually love to do that. Self-portraits is actually one of my favorite things. And just portraits in general, like the study of a person's face. Studying a person's face and figuring out what makes that person, what captures a person's likeness, is something that's always intrigued me. And I still haven't figured it out exactly, but I always love doing portraits of people. And I, I rarely do portraits of myself. I don't know why. I just figure I see myself every day, so it's not very fun to draw myself. But uh, yes, I can go into 
we can do a joint study session on capturing likeness of a person if you ever want to do a portrait. Alright, so it is 801. I'm going to take two more questions and then we are going to finish up today's stream. So, let's see here. Boxers or briefs? <laughs> Come on! Serious questions. Actually, that is a serious question. Boxer briefs. I say both. Kyle Straight, no, I will not grow a fancy beard for the show. I cannot grow a beard properly. I have bald spots right here, if you didn't notice. Right in this area. So it looks really, really silly. La la la. Okay, last question. Last question. <laughs> All right. Mm. Ah, the last question is coming in from Big Maddie. Will you take your guitar and make a nice tune for Emma? Hmm. Interesting you should ask that, Big Matty. As you know, I have had some music written for me for the Emma stream and for the Emma comic uh, by my good buddy, Preco, a.k.a. Well, Preco is his red name. He works at Riot, and his real name is Christian Link. He's actually the person behind the theme music for the awesome login screens that you see every time we log in. It's a new champion. The music that's playing behind that is actually composed by him, and he's done a lot of other awesome music things. He actually used to be in a band from Germany. So, but as far as me writing more music for Emma, you will just have to wait and see. <laughs> I do have some good things planned for that, but can't give away too much just yet. So, with that, I am going to go ahead and end today's stream. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to the Can Kale Emma stream, day nine, level nine. And for those of you watching on YouTube, archive viewers, thumbs up if you like it, thumbs down if you don't. I'm Ken Lafferty, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Until then, you guys take care.